Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to our December monthly board meeting. Welcome to our visitors tonight. I'd like to call this meeting to order. If you would please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I almost said the national anthem. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, Russ? Here. John Maxey? Here. Amy? Here. Mike? Here. John O'Hare? Here. And I'm here. Dennis Gardner is absent tonight. And first on our agenda is our student highlight. We will start with the middle school. Congratulations. Next, our student of the month comes from Frostic Elementary. Good evening. At this time, I'd like to bring up Mrs. Bass to introduce our student of the month. Hi, I'm Megan Bass, Natalie Stockwell's second grade teacher, and I was super excited when I had the opportunity to pick student of the month. It was an easy choice. Um, Natalie shows me and her classmates what it means to be kind, helpful, and responsible all the time. Every morning, we start our day with a writing prompt, um, and Natalie used her free write Friday to teach us what it meant to be kind. Her words were, kindness is using kind words, kindness is helping people when they get hurt, Kindness is celebrating differences, and kindness is using kind actions. I think we can all learn a little bit from Natalie in her words of advice. Natalie, thank you for being such a light in our classroom and for sharing your art and creativity with us. Keep teaching with the world what it means to be a good person, and I can't wait to see the big things you accomplish in second grade.
Next, our student of the month comes from the high school. Hello, Lisa Burns. I'm the principal at the high school and very lucky recipient of some of these students of the months in a few years. I'm going to introduce our health teacher, Johnny Carley, to introduce the high school student of the month. Good evening, everybody. As Lisa said, I'm Johnny Carley health teacher. I'm here to honor a student of mine, Michael Clausen, as student of the month. Michael's earned this honor for multiple reasons, because of his outstanding performance academically, for his exceptional behavior and participation in the classroom, and for the respect he shows for myself and his classmates. Michael's a model student and sets the right example for all of his classmates by coming to class prepared each day, completing quality work and meeting all deadlines. Per the student handbook and student code of conduct, Michael does a superb job of modeling the expected behaviors in the classroom by contributing and creating and maintaining an appropriate school environment through respect, consideration, and cooperative citizenship. Additionally, Michael goes above and beyond by attaining high achievement within the range of his ability level. On top of Michael's great performance in school, he shows great character. He's a good person who demonstrates exemplary personal standards of courtesy, decency, and honesty. And outside of the classroom, Michael is an integral part of the Quiz Bowl team and has great taste in literary fiction, including some of my favorite works like The Godfather and Interview with the Vampire. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for being a great student and keep up the good work. One thing Mr. Carley didn't say about Michael is he a very talented magician as well. And if you missed the talent show, you really missed out. Definitely. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, ma'am. <laughs> uh, that was part of the magic show. <laughs> yeah, sure. Come on over. Thanks, Michael. All right, Next, our student of the month comes from Meyer Elementary. I am Trenton Barr, <clears throat> uh, principal at Meyer Elementary. Uh, I have the pleasure tonight of announcing Aubrey Willis as our student of the month at Meyer. Uh, her teacher, Mrs. Lamb, was not able to be here tonight. Um, she was very bummed, Aubrey, that she couldn't be here, but she's very proud of you. Um, and so she wrote me um, some thoughts on Aubrey. So she said, it is with great pleasure that I announce Aubrey Willis as our December student of the month. Aubrey comes to school every day with a big smile on her face, ready to learn. She puts forth her best effort, and she is always up for a challenge. During math groups, Aubrey is often the first one to raise her hand to answer my questions, and she isn't afraid to step in and help her peers at the math table. Aubrey also has the most beautiful handwriting. I always compliment her and often joke that she should teach my handwriting lessons. Aubrey is self-motivated and has made great academic growth in all areas of first grade. Her, her kind heart and compassion make her a wonderful friend to all. Aubrey's hard work, passion for learning, and desire to do well are a great combination for success. Aubrey, I am so proud of you for all of your accomplishments, accomplishments thus far. Keep working hard, and the sky is the limit. Congratulations.
Our next student of the month comes from Pioneer High School. Unfortunately, our student of the month was unable to make it today, so I still want to share some great things about our Pioneer High School student of the month. This year, this month, we nominated Allie Winslow. Allie is a positive student who strives to do her very best at Pioneer High School. She'll ask questions and always make sure she understands the lessons that are being asked of her. She's currently on target for all of her classes. She's a role model for the other students and takes great pride in her education. She's always one of the first ones willing to help us whenever we need that. So I will make sure she gets this certificate tomorrow at class. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of the board, we'd like to congratulate all of our students tonight, as well as the parents. And thank you, parents, for sharing your students with us. In With your certificates or with your students' certificates, there is also a certificate to Jersey Mike's at the Fort Gratiot location. And we want to give a little shout out to them too and thank them for providing that for us. So thank you. Next on our agenda is audience comment. None, thank you. And then our next would be our consent agenda. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Support. Moved by Mike and support by Amy to approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We do have a new employment of staff. Mrs. Murray, would you like to do the introductions? We would like to introduce Jill Prouse as our Frostic Special Education teacher. Um, we had an amazing interview with her. She is going to do some great things over at Frostic. She comes with a lot of knowledge. We are so excited to have Jill with us. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, up next is our superintendent's report. Superintendent Moody. Thank you, President Gordon. Good evening and congratulations to all of our students of the month from each building. And thank you to their families for honoring the students with us at tonight's meeting. Thank you to Jersey Mike's and Fort Gratiot for the gift certificates for each of our honorees as well. Welcome to Jill. We're excited to have you joining our team. Tonight we'll be receiving our annual audit report from Anderson, Tucky, Bernhard and Duran. Val Hartel is here with us for the presentation. So welcome Val. We'll be hearing from her in a little while. Wednesday of this week, we're having an early dismissal day for staff professional development. And we have a lot of things coming up between now and the holiday break with Christmas sings at both of the elementaries. I think tomorrow is actually Myers at starting at six. There's a couple of different times based on the grade level. So Meyer tomorrow evening is their Christmas sing. Next week on Monday, December 12th is Frostick's Christmas sing. And then next week on Tuesday the 13th, we have the 6th and 7th grade middle school band concert and the 8th grade and high school band will be performing a concert on Thursday, December 15th. So lots of good things and we hope to see you out for some of those. And we want to say that there are some refreshments for everyone to enjoy this evening. And I'm just going to wrap up my superintendent's report. It's a little shorter since we were just meeting a couple of weeks ago, but I want to wish all of you a joyful holiday season. Thank you. Next is curriculum instruction and HR report. Mr. Wood. 
Thank you, President Gordon. Uh, a few of the highlights. My report is also a little shorter this month, um, as Ms. Moody filled in for me last uh, meeting, so thank you, Ms. Moody. <clears throat> On November 30th, we had six staff members attend a professional development training led by Tammy Jackson from MASSP uh, that focused on understanding student needs. We have two additional trainings coming up that will be led by Tammy, uh, one building supportive student relationships on December 13th, and then a restorative practices instruction on January 25th. And as we've covered a couple times, all of those trainings are open to all staff members, um, not just new staff members. Uh, we've also completed our Project Lead the Way Science Kit trainings for our new staff members. Our previous or our current staff members have been trained last year. Uh, we'd like to thank Laura Chambles and the St. Clair Risa for helping us complete that tra training in a timely manner. Uh, we continue to remain active, submitting grants that could potentially provide more funding or additional funding for the district. Uh, we submitted the 98C grant last week, which focuses on student learning loss from the pandemic. We will hopefully hear next month um, or so if we've received that additional funding. And we are pleased to announce that we received $28,584 from the 35A5 grant, uh, which focuses on early literacy. So good to see some of those grants coming back and providing some additional benefits. So that's it. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bishop, good financial evening. report. Um, in front of you, you should have a copy of the district financial statements. As Ms. Booty said, Val is here tonight, um, representing Anderson, Tucky, Bernhardt, our fiscal auditors. This is the all the activity summarized in over one year of time from July 1st to June 30. And when she presents, she's going to give a crash course snapshot view of what's in here in a summarized version and be more than happy to answer any questions and I'll lean on Val since she's here to present anyways if, she, if you have any questions too but talk to me afterwards if you need to if you have any additional questions and I'll be happy to fill you in that's it thanks Keith any district staff want to report mrs. Martin Just, just a real quick um, update. We've been able to recruit a few extra sub bus drivers. And with that, knock on wood, um, we're planning to be able to provide um, transportation for middle school athletic events. And we actually had our first, um, first middle school athletic event that we took um, girls basketball this afternoon. So we're very excited about that. Looking out the next two weeks, it looks like I'm going to be able to cover every sporting away sporting event for the next two weeks. So that's really very positive from, from our department. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, like Lori, I don't want to say it too loud, but my subbing staff is doing pretty good. I don't want to say too much on that. Don't jinx, <laughs> jinx us. Um, staffing is really good. Subs are pretty good. Um, so that's uh, exciting. We got our the last of our big custodial equipment order in and uh, the custodians are all seemingly pretty happy with what they're able to accomplish with some of those newer pieces of equipment that uh, replaced or are replacing some of our older pieces. Um, Excited to see what we're going to do over the break with those. Uh, over the break, we're going to be finishing out the middle school carpeting project, and that should bring us up to um, a pretty uh, positive um, area in terms of how our carpeting across the district looks. So excited about that, too. Uh, our building controls project uh, continues, and um, that's pretty much all I've got. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rachel. Right. Dallas, you're waiting. <laughs> in queue. Uh, first off, um, I'd like to thank the board for last month's decision to go ahead and upgrade the um, camera system for uh, on my recommendation. I appreciate that. Um, so as it stands right now, um, the equipment is either at the Presidio offices or will be there shortly, and they're going to pre-configure that as much as possible before they bring it on site. Um, I've had the cabling team out from St. Clair Risa to go ahead and prep the areas that are going to have the new new cameras installed. So looking forward to that. Um, once we get that process going, it should be a pretty quick. I don't have an exact date right now, but I'm, you know, I'll be pressing them soon. So maybe maybe before uh, we end for the, 
the calendar year, we'll, um, I'll have an update for you guys um, through Mrs. Moody or something. Um, the next thing, along those same lines, uh, Mrs. Moody and I have been talking about um, paging intercom equipment within the within inside of the classrooms. Um, as you know, that talk to any teacher here, any principal here, even before I well before I got here, it's just it's just not loud enough in the rooms, from what I understand. Um, not understand. I've actually been there, and it's not. Uh, if a page or announcement or a bell goes off, there's a 40% chance that the kids will hear it and react accordingly. Um, I just pulled that number out of the air, but it feels like that's that's what it feels like. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> it's very good to see Kelsey even knows. So we've we've got a couple options with that. Um, Colette and I looked at you know to expand the older system and the, that is going to you know it's like you know basically break it out by price and then we got to figure out you know what's going to be best for us and what can can go in place. Um, I do think that you know whatever we do. We're in a much better position with the current phone system that we have. I know that not everybody's a fan of it, but it actually allows us for a lot, a lot more flexibility. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up too was that I did get an FCC grant uh, through E-rate. This is pretty common. We can I get these every five years, and it's this time again. So I've got a grant for um, it's not quite $170,000, but it's $165,000 uh, to pay for $165,000 to pay for the cover costs of new network switches. Um, what these would be would be to replace the existing, actually add to the existing switches, but it gives us a multiple uh, multiple gigabits on a copper port. Now, if you remember, if you you know you're good with your computer science and network terminology, everything is a one gig port, and that's been the standard for 15 years. But now we're looking at 2.5 out of copper, which is crazy fast. Uh, to mate that project with the one coming next. Um, I do I do have some additional funds left to upgrade the Wi-Fi system the following school year. So we're looking at, because, and you know, lead times are terrible with this stuff as well. So this is all kind of, what we have works now and it's just gonna be fine, but I'm putting the orders in for stuff for the next two, possibly three school years out. Um, so we're looking at, you know, going to Wi-Fi 6, um, which is a new standard, um, making sure that we've got, you know, crazy fast, network stuff for our kiddos. Um, this is a fiber cut follow-up, this is the last item. I had, maybe I had this in maybe in a board note, I don't remember for sure, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. Um, in late October, early November, we had a, a second fiber cut this year, and again, they were both fiber cuts were rodent chews. I'm gonna circle back to that in a minute. But we did have 1,600 feet of overhead fiber replaced south of Jetto Road along Wildcat. This work was done by Lapeer ISD, and, and I expect, I anticipate these costs to be reimbursed by Thumb Electric, who is honoring the prior agreement with their advantage, who um, leases some of our fiber. So basically, it shouldn't cost us anything. But so I say that, and I don't know, you know, I'm not a farmer, right? But the old farmer's almanac should have a line in there. It's like, if you're going to, you know, when you're going to have a bad winter, if the all the mice start eating up your fiber. Because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking is gonna happen. So, but anyway, uh, <laughs> that's that's my update, you guys. And uh, have a good Christmas, thank you. Thanks, Dallas. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Student representative report. I think we're still on. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's only been two weeks since we last met, so uh, again, I don't have too much to report, uh, but our students are looking forward to um, some events before uh, the holiday break. Um, as Mrs. Mooney said, Frostick and Meyer Elementary are hosting their holiday sings, um, and the middle school and high school are having their holiday band concerts. Um, during this time of year, students will increasingly start to use their weather apps in anticipation of a holiday break sneak peek. And <laughs> some high schoolers will get to experience their first winter driving in Michigan weather. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to keep it short. And on behalf of the student body, I'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday. Thank you.
Nothing under old business. Under new business, uh, the presentation of the 2021-2022 audit report by Anderson, Tucky, Bernhardt, and Duran. Welcome, Val. Good evening. And as I told Miss Moody, I managed to take a detour around to get here tonight. So <laughs> if I look a little flustered, that was why, because I should know better. But I thought that the construction would be done, and I was mistaken. So I wasn't. And then what made it worse is that um, I actually, all the audit days, I actually didn't drive here. My coworker did. And I didn't pay attention to how he got here. So there I am driving around, but I got here. So that was the important thing. And I did hear on the way here that there was a chance of snow flurries. So I don't know if I'm going to see them on the way home hmm. over the night or not at all. But I did hear that. So hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think for the, the student rep, I know he left, but I don't think it's going to be a snow day tomorrow or anything like that. No. The mice said no. Okay, good deal. <laughs> And I am, as I said, my name is Val Hardell. I'm a shareholder with Anderson, Tucky, Bernhardt, and Doran, the CPA firm that did the uh, audit this year. I, in January, I will have been with the firm 40 years. Wow. So. Congratulations. Yeah, so that's why driving around at night with detours, you know, probably not my thing. <laughs> but I am not going to cover every page in the audit report. As Keith said, or else you would be here all night long. And even though everybody else's presentation was a little shorter, I don't think you want mine to be quite that long. Hmm. So we will cover some highlights, but if you have questions, definitely let me know. And some of the highlights, I'll have references to the pages in the audit report, so you can look there for all the detail. And I'm sure you got the audit report in advance, and you probably studied every page, so you can hmm. probably get up here and do the presentation also. However, you know, then I won't have anything to do, so I'll go ahead and do it. The um, audit opinion was unmodified, which means it's a clean opinion, the highest level of assurance possible. And a few highlights from the audit report, page 13, you'll notice the reference there on the bottom in red. The general fund had assets of 6,381,708, liabilities 2,879,581, giving it a fund balance, 3,502,127. The non-bonded capital projects, assets, and fund balance, 1,816,020. The combined debt service fund, assets, 3,292,549, liabilities, 64,285, ending fund balance, 3,228,264. The total non-major governmental funds, which there's actually three funds in here, and we'll cover just a little highlight a little later, but it's your food service, your student activity fund, and your capital project um, uh, thinking fund. And that was 1,522,927 in assets, 3,334,069 in liabilities, 1,188,858 in fund balance. And the totals far to the right, 13,013,204 in assets, 3,277,935 in liabilities, 9,735,269 in fund balance. Your fund balance is divided amongst various areas, and you'll see there's non-spendable for inventory, prepaid, there's restricted for debt service, capital projects fund, sinking fund, the food service. There's committed for capital projects, there's a student school activities fund, and there's assigned for compensated absence, and then your unassigned is 3238874 The statement of revenues, expenditures, and change in fund balance. Your general fund had revenues 23,964,636. Expenditures 23,548,529. Other financing uses 203,826 giving you a change in fund balance for your general fund, a positive 212,286. Then your um, 
Combined debt service fund, head revenues, one million five ninety six two seventeen. Expenditures, one million six ten nine twenty six. Other financing sources, two hundred sixty eight thousand six seventy three. Giving you a change in fund balance, two hundred fifty three thousand nine sixty four. Your other non major funds, head revenues, two million three sixty eight two fifty seven. Expenditures, two million two thousand two six forty seven. And other financing uses, 29800 giving you a change in fund balance, 335810 And overall change in fund balance, all your governmental funds, a positive 802060. Now a little closer look at your general fund, if you want to compare it to the prior year. Your assets went up by 312768 Your liabilities, they went up by 100482 and the change in fund balance, 212286 The revenues, they went up by 1430809 Your expenditures went up by 1571683 Other financing sources, 31261 And the, the change in fund balance, 172135 comparing to the prior year. Comparing to your budget, your original budget for general fund was a positive 151,882. Your final budget, you budget a negative 60,703, and your actual was a positive 212,286. So your variance overall was a positive 272,989. But notice that your uh, expenditures actually had a negative variance of 318,184, which I'll mention a little later, but I just want to mention that right now. Uh, the um, revenues, you see the change in revenues from the budget, the 57716, and mostly you received more in your state sources and your federal sources than your final budget. A pie chart showing you your sources of revenue. Your state sources are 69%, your federal sources 12, other one, local sources 18%. Your expenditures. Your uh, instruction was over budget by the 289,599, and your uh, debt service, 71,586. You see the total down there, the 318,184 was your change, your um, amount that your expenditures were over budget. Your uh, pie chart of your expenditures, your basic programs are 51%, other instruction 10. Operations 10, Administration 10, Transportation 5, Other Supporting Services 10, Athletics is 2, Your Debt Service and Your Community Service that were less than 1%, so that's why they show it 0, Your Other Transactions 2. Showing it by object, Your Salaries are 40%, Your Fringe is 31, Your Purchase Service is 16, your supplies five, your capital outlay four, and other is four percent. The other funds, your debt service compared to the prior year, the uh, assets went up by two hundred fifty-three thousand three fifty-nine. Your liabilities they went down by six hundred five. Your revenues went up twenty-six thousand seven thirty-two. Your expenditures went up twenty-two thousand one hundred one, and your other financing sources. That went up 18820 for the debt funds. The non-major funds, the food service, the student activities, and the capital project sinking fund, you'll see their assets, the 1522927 liabilities, 334069 The revenues, total is 2368257 Expenditures, 2, $2,2647. Other financing uses. 29,800. The change in fund balance, the food service fund had a positive 78,166. The student activities fund had a positive 46,353. The capital project sinking fund had a positive change in fund balance, 211,291. And that information, if you want to see the detail, that's on the audit on page 49 and 50. Your custodial fund is a fiduciary fund. And that actually went down your assets by 7476 and the net position the same. 
The footnotes, which actually cover pages 18 to 42, are really exciting, and I know you read them all, but the couple highlights, your 5,768,566 is uninsured out of your total bank balance of 6,268,566, which what that is, is if you uh, keep your funds mostly in one bank, you have the FDIC insurance, which is 250,000 per uh, bank. The long-term debt, your principal balance is 11,962,187. And that does include your bonds, your capital leases, and your installment uh, in agreements. Note seven is your pension and OPEP. That's a, takes quite a few pages out of that report. Pretty exciting information there. Note 11, tax abatements, 17,929 was abated from two municipalities. Note 12 covers your upcoming pronouncements. Note 13 lets you know that you adopted a change in accounting principle. It was GASB 87, which is leases. And it added 34,382 to your capital assets and the same amount to your debt. You had no choice in adopting that GASB, so you had to do it. And what the um, Government Auditing Standards Board wants you to do is to show if you have a long-term lease that basically is like a purchase, they want it to show that way. They feel it's more transparent for the reader. So that is what is required, and that is why you had to do that. Your net pension liability. Now this is some really, this is actually some really good news. You are paying more into your net pension um, debt, and it's actually coming down as the state has, is projecting. They do pay you ex extra so that you can pay in extra. However, the overall effect is good your net pension liability decreased 11343214 from the prior year. And your share of the whole state of Michigan is 0.10597%. And the total state of Michigan is $23.68 billion. They, uh, a year ago, the whole state of Michigan's figure was $34 billion. So it went from 34 to 23.68, the whole state of Michigan. So that actually is coming down as projected. So hopefully it'll be, you know, manageable in just a few years. Your share of OPEB, the same situation. Yours came down 4,059,989. So yours is 1,601,227 at June 30th of 22. Your share is 0 0.10490. And the total state of Michigan is $1.53 billion dollars. And it was a year ago, $5.41 billion. So it is, you know, coming down substantially. Single audit. Uh, if you receive more than 750,000 of federal funds, you're required to have a single audit, which is something that you have been required to have, um, I think, basically forever. It used to be a smaller figure, uh, but it has gone up to 750, but that still has not impacted you in, in needing a single audit. You still needed one. It's a compliance audit. The opinion is unmodified. There were no material instances of non-compliance. We did have a finding, which is finding 202201, which was excess food service fund balance, which is th it's considered a significant deficiency. We only have so many choices. And what this is, is that if you have more than three months supply of fund balance on hand, more than three months of expenditures for food service on hand at June 30th, then you have to be uh, have this finding. And many districts actually had it. I think this is a repeat for you from the year before because you try to order equipment, you try to purchase items for food service because you can't just buy anything with it. You have to you know, buy required things and they have to be for food service. It didn't come in. You know, there's, there's just been supply and demand issues and many districts had this. So I do not think the state is really gonna I, I think they've basically given all districts a kind of an extension on this. And I think as long as you have it hopefully under control by the end of next, you know, June 30th to 23, there shouldn't be any issues. And I think things are finally, at least I'm hearing things are finally starting to come in, finally able to get your equipment that you've ordered and, you know, maybe your extra, you, I know you're also looking at, um, you know, health food options, some healthier food, you know, some different um, meal plans, you know, different things that are, that you can use that money for. So I don't anticipate that, you know, being on here next year. If it is, the state might not be as generous. I don't know, this year they, I think, they just wanna see it so that they know, but uh, I think that's about it. 
your federal awards. This is, I find, I find this is one of the more interesting charts just to see what differences the COVID has made in, you know, these years. They, they've given a lot of federal monies, but you notice they kind of take away from some and give to the others. And so that's why I like having this chart showing last year compared to this year. Your Title I, you know, was less. Your Title IIA was less. So was your special education IDEA. However, then you'll notice the next several were quite a bit more, especially child nutrition cluster. That one was up 232446 So that's a substantial number. And pretty much that is extra COVID money. The um, gear was down 98000 That was, you know, one of the COVID uh, funding sources. However, the ESSER 2 and 3 was up 1590183 the CRF, which was the COVID relief funds, that was down 735, and the MyConnect, which was a COVID monies to get, um, I think like hot spots and that kind of thing, uh, electronics for the uh, children that had to do remote learning. That one was down 32,398. But your overall federal revenues was up 887,500 from the prior year. And I think you'll still see a lot of federal awards coming in during this current year for COVID monies. After this year, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but probably there'll be some other type of, you know, post-COVID relief type thing that will be, need to be done for the kids. So it's always interesting to see what kind of federal funds and why they always have to change their names. I don't know, but they do <laughs> just to confuse us. I have a few other pieces of statistical information for you. This is a line chart showing your revenues and expenditures 2015 to 2022. The revenues are the blue and the expenditures are the red. So in your district, you'll notice that you've been, you're pretty much even with revenues and expenditures. So that, you know, and that's good because, you know, you basically, whatever you get in, you spend, or, you know, it might be a little more expense or a little more revenue one year, but it's never substantial differences between those two amounts. Your fund balance, we show it as a percentage of expenditures. Yours is 14.87% at June 30th to 22. Your peer group, for which is in your, your size students, 1,500 to 1,999, was actually 22.39%. And the state of Michigan, 19.28. The uh, fund balance is a percentage of general fund revenues, yours is 14.61. Your peer group in that same student population, 21.95. In the state of Michigan, 19.56. This is showing your student count over the years from 2014 to 2022. Your student count in 2022, the average student count was 1,938.16. So, so you, 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 do not, you notice that in the, when I did the previous two charts, I had to change your peer group because previous to this year, you were over 2,000 students. So you were in the 2,000 to 2,500, and this year you were in the 1,500 to 2,000. And I have had this happen with several of my districts. They went down a peer group. I'm not sure where all the students went to. You know, some of the small ones, small districts, they seem to pick up a few students, but uh, pretty much all the larger ones seem to have lost a substantial amount. And I don't, hopefully they, they're coming back, you know, I, you know, we never know, but hopefully we see this chart take a, a change. But yours, you know, your, yours was, um, you know, down 4.39, but the state of Michigan was 4.08. So uh, the whole state did lose students too. In conclusion, I do have a government letter in your packet. And that's a letter, it's a couple page letter and it states what our responsibilities are as an auditor and what yours are as a district. It also lets you know what estimates we, we used and if there were any major disagreements, which there were not, and if there were any specialists needed, which there were not. The management comment letter is, is also in there and this is a one page letter and it, um, it's the one that lets you know about the budget compliance and that you do have that budget violation because of your expenditures being over your budget. I was able to put it in just a letter and not as a finding because your overall, your net um, surplus was more than you budgeted. So you actually still ended up positive. So I do not feel this would be an issue with the state, but they were very clear to 
to me like a year ago when they called and they said, well, if there's a you know large budget variance like that, I, we at least want to see it in a letter because we want to make sure that the board knows. So that is auditor's job to let the board know, and that's why I put that in the letter for you. The other letter is the um, an informational letter. It's letting you know what things are coming up, and it. Um, there's another GASB coming up, it's GASB 91, which is with the conduit debt, which I don't believe will affect you for next year, and GASB 96, which is subscription-based technology, which I do believe will affect you. It's very similar to the lease one that we had to adopt this year, except that one will be if you lease textbooks, you lease software, these are the things that are going to have to be considered and probably set up as an asset and as debt. So they'll be handled the same way. And so instead of making a lease payment for your textbooks, you're going to be making a debt payment. Uh, anything that's major, you're required to do that for it. If it was something really tiny, like I have some that maybe pay, you know, a dollar a year for something, then, then it, that wouldn't count. That would be immaterial. However, if you paid substantial amounts for textbooks or for your lease software, and it's more than a year, if it's only a year, if it's year by year, then this doesn't apply either because then it's truly a lease. However, if it's more than a year, then we have to look at this and consider it and probably uh, put it as an asset and debt. There's also some changes going to be coming up, hopefully, after I retire. You know, they don't have a date set, so thank goodness, because I don't have a date set either, so, <laughs> so we're all good. But they're going to be changing the GASB uh, 34, you know, where the the... GASB 34 statement is going to be different. I don't know what they're going to do to it, but they're going to mess it all up again. And then the MDNA, which is what Keith uh, writes, uh, that's going to change too. So that'll be fun. I've got some of my older business managers. They said they're, they're retiring before that happens. So we're all watching that date. We don't know when it's going to happen. We, right now it's kind of in a discovery stage. So that'll be fun. I, you know, I am in the accounting profession, but I don't have any say as to what the GASB board does. And the GASB board is the Government Auditing Standards Board. And they, you know, in their wisdom, think a lot of this stuff is necessary for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, they do. So that will be coming up. And we do want to thank, uh, you know, Keith especially because we are here. Well, this year, I don't know if it was good or bad, but he didn't, he didn't actually physically get to see us that much because he, he, he couldn't come in those few days. But he was uh, we were able to contact him directly you know, via email, via the phone, and he was really quick at getting us everything. And uh, Miss Moody was here, so she was helping out, and Tennille and the rest of the group were all very helpful at getting everything, so we were able to, you know, keep th things going along. And fortunately, we have the portal, too, that we put stuff in, he puts stuff in, staff puts stuff in, so we can you know, share that, and we were able to get, keep everything moving right along and got it done just right on time, so that was good. And Jordan and I, and Jordan, he's the one that drove, so see, it's his fault that I didn't know what <laughs> tour I was supposed to take. Although one of our other staff members, uh, Pauline, that uh, lives in Croswell, she said that the detour that Jordan took, he shouldn't have took that method. We should have went somewhere else, so I don't know. So I'm going to try something different on the way home. I'm, hopefully I'm going to follow what Miss Moody tells us to do, and I'll get where I'm supposed to go, back onto the road heading, you know, towards Marlette. So that's kind of where I want to get, heading that way. But we appreciate everybody's time and effort, and if we have any questions, again, this was a highlight. I know there's a lot more detail in those lovely books, and um, Keith also has a PDF copy. That, If not already, it's going to be on the website. I know Dallas is quick like that, getting it out there, so uh, it'll be out there so you can see it any time of the day or night. You can just, you know, check it right out on your website. It's exciting. <laughs> and I was exciting to hear the one little, little gal here. She, she liked her math, right? The little girl that won one of the student of the month. I thought, that's good because what we've noticed is there's not a lot of um, students going into accounting for some reason. I don't know if they think it's boring or, you know, whatever. But look at these Gatsby things. It's always changing. There's always <laughs> something going on. So, you know, we have to. I know they don't teach bookkeeping and that kind of thing anymore. But there's lots of options in an accounting career. You know, it doesn't have to be public accounting like myself. Doesn't have to be school accounting like Keith, but there's just lots of different options. And, you know, I think it's a great thing to, you know, and I said so once we get, we we're thinking we should do more in the schools to kind of promote that because it's just not, uh, I actually live in Carroll, 
And I last, I'd say about the last three years, I don't think a one of the graduates went into accounting. And that's, you know, it's a little bit smaller than Croslex, but it's still a decent sized district. Mm -hmm. Any questions? It was too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I got it all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Val. Just so the board knows, the annual audit report is a legal requirement, and uh, the final step then would be to have the board officially approve the audit. I'll make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 audit report as presented. Support. Moved by Russ and support by Mike to approve the 2021-2022 audit report. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next is to select a new committee of the whole meeting date for January. Regular meeting is the 16th. Yes, that's correct. 16th. The 16th is that's correct. Third Monday. Yeah. So whichever way that's going to go, it's going to be up against a consecutive week to mm -hmm. a regular board meeting because the February board meeting is the 6th, so it's right at the beginning of February. So the 9th or the 23rd? The thirtieth. Anybody have a? Do we normally try to do the committee of the whole before the regular board meeting in case there's some action we want to take during that month's regular board meeting? So should we shoot for the ninth? That's fine with me. Fine with me. Anybody else? January 9th is the new committee of the whole meeting date. And then we need to approve the renewing curriculum through the HMH Go Math. You had a proposal that was shared with you for HMH Go Math. We've been using that curriculum for six years and the Instructional Planning Committee got together reviewed how that's going, how do they feel about it. They feel like we've had a really good movement in math with common vocabulary and they're starting to see that carry over in the students as they're going from year to year and using that same common curriculum. So their recommendation is to continue that. And after we had looked at Go Math, reached back out to the company, they're not going to be continuing it for secondary after two years. So we have two years to continue on with a K-12 program and we'd like to continue it for that two years and that will give us some time to decide then, look at some other curriculums and see what kind of a change that we might need to make at that point. Whether we go with a different curriculum for secondary and continue on with GoMath for the K-6 program or do we switch completely and stick with a K-12 program. But we'd like to be able to continue that on for the next two years and keep that consistency going for right now, too. I'll make a motion to approve renewing the curriculum through GoMath as presented. Support. Moved by Russ. Support by Amy to approve renewing the curriculum through HMH GoMath. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Last is to adjourn. Mike. Support. Amy.
to adjourn at 7.56. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm sure there's no opposal. Have a happy holiday, everybody.